Evercore ISI out with a new report on key takeaways from the second quarter uh, earnings season, including the firm's top internet picks. The top large cap names, Uber, Amazon, Meta, and Spotify. And Pinterest tops the small and mid cap picks, followed by uh, website builder Wix.com and ad tech company Magnite. 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 <laughs> from the Latin. Magnetic. Join us now with more from Mark Mahaney, Evercore ISI, uh, head of uh, internet research. We were talking about some, I, I'm not going to go He's my, my new favorite person. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to, yeah, he's your idol, right? Yes. How many kids? <laughs> I have 10 children. That's so <laughs> awesome, isn't it? Don't get any idea. I, I, I'm, I'm truly <laughs> speechless. I'm speechless. So uh, I, I wish I had. Honestly, I wish I had. I love it so. What, why else be a lot? Honestly, it's so great. Uh, anyway, we're talking about stocks. Um, what do you think of the what, what you just heard? Is, is, you agree? I hope so. Yes, yeah, we, it's yours. we just just wrote that. Yeah. So look, we've just gone through earnings season. Multiples have come up a lot this year. So we started off the year with a pretty big rally in in Megatech for good reasons because the stocks got so beaten down last year and the estimates got got so beaten down. So you had some really great setups. Setups are a little tougher now. That's the that's the negative news. The sort of the positive contrarian news is that fundamentals still haven't recovered. If you think about the three biggest parts of internet revenue, it's retail, advertising, and cloud. Those growth rates are all depressed. So you want to be constructive on growth rates when they can recover. And then the third thing is we're finally starting to see these margins improve. So we had all these layoffs last year, and there were a bunch of other things that happened. There were a lot of efficiencies, for example, that Amazon brought to its distribution center. But the good news for investors is you're now at a point where revenue growth can start reaccelerating and margins are expanding. Stocks usually work well in that environment, so we stay tactically constructive on the sector. So, so in terms of macro, you, you don't worry about the minutes and you just... No, we do. The, uh, Absolutely. It's just uh, um, I, the demand trends, uh, and it shows up in the demand trends. They're still soft, like uh, Amazon's online store retail growth this last quarter was 4%. Like, that's depressed. But, you know, you want to be constructive on the stock when valuation is reasonable and you think you can go from depressed growth rates back to normal growth rates. Have you heard anyone say that this whole AI phenomenon is setting up so it looks very similar uh, to, to the late 90s? I have, I have heard people say that. I just think it's fundamentally different this time. So, you know, you were around back different then. Different this time. Yes, I'm sorry. That. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said that. But these businesses are a heck of a lot more profitable than they were right. back then. There's more cash amongst the large tech companies than there was market cap back then. I mean, cash on their balance sheets. So these are obviously highly profitable businesses. And that's why the stocks, at least the mega cap names, have done so well this year. It is, this is going to be an enduring theme. And I think you can look for the derivatives. The market has glommed onto two of them. Glammed or glommed onto two of them, Microsoft and NVIDIA. But I think there's more than that out there. AWS, uh, Amazon's cloud business, I think can be a multi-year beneficiary of the rollout of generative AI. You're going to see more and more companies roll out solutions, apps based on this. And I think you're going to be, there's going to be infrastructure ways to play that. Amazon is one of those. So nothing's overheated. Right? I mean, things don't have to be identical. The th history can rhyme. And yes. it just seems like there's been, you know, a lot of concentration in, in one small part uh, of the market, not as the breath isn't what it should be at this point. But this is what you do. This yeah. is your sector, so you're lucky that you picked that sector. Well, yeah, maybe I'm lucky, but um, I'd also make it a point if if the market starts to recover, wouldn't you want it to start to recover with the highest quality names out there, and then get to the speculative names? And if you look at big tech names, look at the balance sheets, look at the growth rates, the secular trends. These are some of the best well-run companies in the country. So that's what that's those are the companies that should lead the rally, and then we'll start you know shifting out. But is to there value rates. there? These are not, are these, I mean, I don't want to say value. Are they, would you consider these either value names or are they, I mean, they're not unloved. There's nothing unloved about these names. They've become more mature and they've become more value-oriented or even Garpy. Garpy or even value-oriented. So let me, let me stick with one of my favorite names, which is Meta. Very controversial name in the past for, for a lot of good reasons. I understand that. But this is now trading at 15 times gap earnings for a company that's going to exit this year growing 20% year over year with margin expansion, and they're buying a heck of a lot of stock. So this is almost like a 20 to 30% earnings grower trading at 15 times. You don't normally see stocks trading at that much of a discount to the growth rate. I really like Meta as a stock. It's our number three pick.